welcome to this week's episode of LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Brona Morgan, and it is still the new year and still the show that we talk about current events and in particular politics on Rogers TV. So here we are, another episode and another one of my favorite politicians from Southwestern Ontario, from London, serving London West. So my own member of provincial parliament for London West, Peggy Sattler. I, she knocked on my door during the <laughs> campaign in June and I, was, I said, you know, I'm always looking for guests for LDN ONT TV and she followed through. Here she is. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a while, but uh, glad to make it here. Well, it's a, it's been uh, quite a busy, I guess, election last couple of years, of course, right? So there was the federal election, then we had the provincial, then we had the municipal election. Lots of things going on, obviously, at Queen's Park. Very busy yeah. people. So um, I'm glad that you've been able to make the time to come and visit with us and tell us about all things Peggy Sadler and all things uh, London West and I guess all things Ontario because you're involved in so many issues not just locally but you know working together with your colleagues at Queen's Park to try and make Ontario a better place as well. Yeah. So I, I spoke with on our last episode um, Joe Preston who I've known for a long time as well and he's worked at various levels of government and one of the things that Joe and I have in common and I think that we share as well is this idea that you know getting into politics is really about service and yeah. people who you know end up in this line of work they do it because they kind of feel compelled to try and make their community and the world, I guess, at large, a better place. And they think that they have some great ideas. So maybe could you tell our viewers who don't know you so well about your journey to that got you involved in politics? Sure, so I grew up with a brother who has an intellectual disability, so a younger brother. I saw my mom have to advocate fiercely to get my brother the supports that he needed at school. Uh, so that has really shaped my worldview. Uh, number one, the importance of public education in supporting people like my brother. And number two, the need to have a society that lets people like my brother engage fully and participate, you know, the way that every citizen should be able to. So that has been a real motivator for me when, when we moved to London uh, in, uh, I think that was 1995, we moved here and uh, I became involved in the school board, uh, first elected in 2000. My, my kids were in JK and in grade two, so very young but uh, got involved in the school board because I recognized the importance of public education, uh, especially for students with, with special needs and students who don't come from privileged backgrounds. And uh, I what served as a school board trustee for 13 years. I was chair of the school board. I was chair of the special education advisory committee. And uh, when the, uh, the opportunity came um, uh, available in 2013 to run in a by-election, at the provincial level, I thought that this would be a new opportunity to try to push the issues that are important to me and are important to so many uh, families and kids in, uh, in London. That's uh, what a beautiful story. <laughs> wow, like very inspiring. So you saw like in your, your, your family life, you saw like something that was a need and something that was important and you just let that kind of inform how your whole career is gone. That, that's just delightful. So yeah, wonderful. And, I mean, the other thing is, I think my mother was a really important influence on me too, in terms of women's ability to, uh, to advance issues and to advocate and to push for changes. And I've always been a, a, a real supporter of getting more women involved in political life. Uh, that's been really important to me. And I think that in, it improves the quality of public debate and it improves the quality of, of public decisions when you have a diversity of views at the table, including uh, women. Could not agree more. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm um, trustee to member of provincial parliament. Obviously, like both really, you know, hands on work is involved in both cases. Um, talk to me about maybe some of the 
successes, some things that you're proud of that you were able to accomplish while a trustee, and maybe some of the work that you're proud of that you've been able to accomplish as an MPP. Yeah, well, as a trustee back in 2013, we, or 2003, uh, we had a group of LGBTQ students who said that the school board's safe schools policies weren't working for them. They did not feel safe and supported in Thames Valley Classroom. So uh, I met with the students, we, uh, we developed an ad hoc committee to engage with the students, engage with the community, and come up with some strategies to make sure that those students were feeling safe. And the action plan that we put forward was actually, we were the first school board outside the city of Toronto to really take some concrete measures to ensure that, that these students, all students, felt uh, safe and uh, included uh, in our classroom. So that was something that was really important to me because equity and inclusion are kind of, you know, my fundamental values. So um, 2003, so... It was before same-sex marriage wow. had been recognized by the Supreme Court. It was, it was, uh, it was pretty groundbreaking. And for so the 20 board. years later, you must be able to see like how that has kind of snowballed into making... Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the progress that has been made is really encouraging, although we know that there are, you know, there's still a long, long way, way to, to go. go. Right. Long way to go, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, now how about as an MPP? So you've been serving as an MPP in London West since, did you almost, say 13? Yeah, no, almost nine years as an MPP elected gotcha. in 2013. But I would say the thing that I'm proudest of as an MPP well, a couple of things. I mean, you have, you always have kind of the individual wins at the local level, at the riding level, when you are actually able to help a constituent get the, the program or service right. uh, that they need. And so whenever that happens, that to me makes it all worthwhile. Uh, but in, in sort of in the bigger picture, I had uh, a private member's bill that I uh, brought forward three times uh, to, uh, to provide paid leave for employees who are experiencing domestic violence or sexual violence. When I moved to London, I volunteered at what was then Women's Community House, now ANOVA, and I also worked at uh, ANOVA for, uh, for about a year doing helping with fund development. So I've always been passionate about uh, ending violence against women and uh, providing paid leave for employees who are experiencing violence at home is really important to enable uh, usually a woman to leave an abusive relationship. And so I brought forward this uh, private member's bill three times. Uh, the government did not uh, support it, uh, but eventually, you know, they opened up the Employment Standards Act, they held public consultations. There was such an outpouring of support for my bill that the Liberal government at the time included it in the package of changes that they made to the Employment Standards Act. And then when the Conservative government was elected in 2018, it was one of the few changes that the Liberals had made that the Conservatives didn't reverse. So that is law in the province of Ontario because of a private member's bill that I brought forward. And I think it's making a huge difference for employees who are experiencing violence at home to be able to feel that financial security to deal with what they're experiencing without fearing that they're going to lose their job. Absolutely. And I think like not only like substantively how important that change is, but this really is, um, I guess this kind of puts to rest the argument that people who are in opposition can't make positive change. Oh, absolutely. And there's there's lots of other examples of, of um, MPPs from other parties who have had a great idea <laughs> and have brought forward a private member's bill again and again and again. And then there's just so much support, you know, generated and mobilized that finally the government has to acknowledge, yeah, that's a good idea, and we should move forward with it. And I guess a little bit is, it, you know, it maybe is that bill didn't pass, but the law changed, and that's yeah. a win. Yeah, absolutely. Regardless of how it all, like whatever machinery or whatever things had to happen to make that. And, you know, I think that that's something that comes from being at the school board or being at the muni municipal level, because the, they don't operate on party systems. And so... 
whenever the government comes out with an idea, no matter what stripe the government is, if it's a good idea, you embrace it. Like if it's a bad idea, you say, whoa, like, wait a minute, you should rethink that. And it's the same thing. My view of politics has always been, has always been that, that, you know, good policy is good policy, regardless of who's bringing it to the table. And so we have to be able to find the, that common ground and work together to move forward on these issues that are so important to the people we represent. Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to hearing, I guess, your takes on more of the issues that are important <laughs> okay. to people, not only here in London, London West specifically, but all over Ontario. So, but we do have to take a break. So sure. please stay with us. We're going to be chatting with Peggy Sattler more after the break, as well as another fantastic youth guest that you know we never forget about. So please stay tuned for more LDN ONT TV. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Carbon monoxide is a deadly gas you can't see, smell, or taste. Homes with fuel burning appliances and or attached garages must have working CO alarms installed outside all sleeping areas. Don't let the silent killer get you. Install working CO alarms today. action on Rogers TV. Saul? Saul? Toast is burning. Toast is not. Every time she has a seizure, she smells something burning. Now if we can provoke that smell by probing the surface of the brain, we'll find the source of the seizures. Mrs. Gold, do you feel anything? I can see the most wonderful lights. And now what do you feel? Did you pour cold water on my hand, Dr. Penfield? Now what? Uh, what is it, Mrs. Gold? Burnt toast. Dr. Penfield, I can smell burnt toast. Dr. Wilder Penfield. He cured my seizures and hundreds more. They say he drew the roadmap of the human brain. We just called him the greatest Canadian alive. This is Rogers TV. Welcome back to LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Brona Morgan, and I've been having a really encouraging, I guess, <laughs> uplifting conversation with my own London West MPP, Peggy Sattler. Just, um, it, it's again, it's a wonderful conversation when you hear politicians talking about collaboration, working together, a good idea is a good idea, and we're all really just working towards making Ontario and our communities a better place. So I just, I love these kind of conversations when we don't talk, it's not so partisan it's just about people that want to serve and want to make the world a better place and I just love that so anyway let's let's get more into what's been going on at Queen's Park lately um, talk about you know maybe since the election in June some of the things that have been happening some of the things that have been going on that have been important I think you know health is on a lot of people's minds obviously housing is on a lot of people's minds yeah, and I, I'm sorry to be a downer. Oh, no, it's having, not a downer. You've got to tell okay. the truth. Yeah, I know there's a downside. After having been so, you know, so encouraging about the uh, the possibility of, of parties working together, we have not seen much of that at all uh, with this Ford government, and especially uh, since the, uh, the recent election. It's really been uh, an incredibly intense roller coaster of a legislative session uh, through the summer with there was a break over the municipal campaign period and then we came back in the fall but but some of the things the government has done have been like just incredibly uh, alarming and and damaging to uh, I think to uh, to the people in our province so we saw them uh, implement the, the new rules for alternate level of care uh, patients in hospital uh, that will allow those patients to be involuntarily transferred to a long-term care home, not of their choosing, out of their community, away from their 
you know their their family networks and and support systems and and uh, we're starting to hear about uh, patients who are in alter, who are in alternate level of care beds and are facing this they're either going to be have to pay 400 bucks a day for the bed or they're going to be forced to a, a long-term care home that they don't want to go to and uh, that has families obviously and and the vulnerable people uh, who are in these ALC beds uh, very very concerned uh, more we saw the government in the uh, in the fall you know uh, use the notwithstanding clause which w is supposed to be you know restricted to only the most fundamental uh, and important issues they used it to uh, to to take away bargaining rights from some of the lowest case paid education workers it in our system and uh, these are people that parents understand are the glue that uh, keeps our education system uh, functioning and there was such uh, an outpouring of public support for those workers that the the government was forced to backtrack on uh, on that uh, legislation and then we closed the session in the fall with the government's attack on the green belt and we all saw the video of Ford in a private room with donors saying no I'm uh, you know or saying uh, yeah sure I'll open up the green belt I know it would uh, it would help you make more money then promise publicly 18 times not to carve up the green belt and then you know sure enough they introduce legislation that does exactly that opens up the green belt uh, to development and there's lots of legitimate questions about who's benefiting who knew about these parcels of, of land that are now going to be carved out of, uh, of the protected green belt. And that has got uh, people really up in arms. But, but I think the crisis in our healthcare system has been the, you know, underlying all of this as we've seen, um, we've seen uh, children's hospitals have to delay surgeries. We saw Chio and Ottawa have to call in the red, the International Red Cross, yeah. uh, to help with uh, with the crisis that they are seeing with RSV and uh, and uh, and COVID and uh, and the flu. And uh, the government has really done nothing to deal with the crisis uh, except to float the idea of let's go for more privatized healthcare, and that has got also got people really alarmed because they know that uh, that privatized health Healthcare is is two tier healthcare. You know, one healthcare system for those who can pay, and a, and a, and a lesser healthcare system for those who uh, who can't. So uh, so it's it's really been exhausting. It's uh, it's an intense uh, uh, period in Ontario's political uh, history. Uh, but uh, but I think that uh, people are really pushing back, especially on the green belt issue right now. That has uh, that has got you know we've got the integrity commissioner looking at it. We've got the Auditor General looking at it. We've got the OPP uh, looking at it uh, as to uh, you know the, the the potential conflict of interest that the Ford government is in uh, with the with these decisions on the green belt. Let me ask you this: so obviously we're in a we're a bit of an island, London. So we've got three NDP representatives for the mm -hmm. three. Um, writings that have London in the, f the first word of their name. Yes, right. that are entirely within the city. So for people who are extremely passionate, and I think that's probably everybody, about getting their point of view across and, and making sure that these issues that we, we cannot ignore anymore are getting dealt with effectively, how, how, do, we, how do we influence this government? Well, we did. We saw with the notwithstanding clause and the withdrawal of that of that bill, where they used the that that uh, constitutional override, um, the the government was forced to back down on that uh, because of the uprising of public opinion to say that this is wrong. This is a misuse of uh, of government power. 
And uh, I think that we are, you know, we're, we're seeing that same kind of, of, uh, of uh, attention being mobilized around what the government's doing with the green belt. So, so the, the encouraging thing about that, the whole not, notwithstanding clause uh, debacle was that, was that public pressure worked, like public pressure forced the government to, uh, to back down. And uh, there were some other examples in the, when the, the, the government's first term in office where they were forced to walk back uh, a little bit on uh, some of their uh, some of their more extreme uh, policy uh, changes but uh, but you know uh, the the government <laughs> sometimes they do listen to public opinion so it's, citizen engagement absolutely that's what it's all about absolutely and I know you're really open to citizens engagement you're a great listener and I know, you know, because you, you took the time, you actually visited my home, and <laughs> that doesn't always happen in my neighborhood. So I know, you know, campaign wasn't too long ago, and I know you engaged with a lot of people, in particular young people, because, uh, yeah, yeah. so talk to me about, and talk to young people who might be watching about getting involved. I've run a program for uh, for several years called Girls Government that focuses on grade seven and eight girls, which is a time when they're just starting to get interested in politics, and uh, you know the research shows that that interest can drop off later in high school. But it's to really get them mobilized around an issue that they're passionate about and learn some of the advocacy tools uh, that will help uh, advance change on that issue. During the election, I was so pleased to run into several of the girls who were part of my, you know, the, the early groups of girls' governments who are now in university. And, uh, and when I knocked on their doors, they were so happy to see me and told me what, like, what an incredible experience that was for them to go through that program. I brought them to Queen's Park. You know, they met with MPPs. They presented petitions. And so that that experience was really transformative for for some of those young people. Um, I have a London West Youth Cabinet that we're going to be uh, starting up again um, in February. Uh, that it allows high school students to be oh, uh, awesome. engaged. Yeah, and uh, and I was also really excited by the number of young people who were involved in uh, in my campaign. Most recently, like you know, there's this there's this myth that uh, that young people uh, aren't interested in politics and and if I didn't have young people you know running my campaign I wouldn't have had a campaign it was the young people who were really turning out and uh, and doing the work and and getting really excited uh, talking to voters so and that's perfect because we're going to be talking to one of those young people yeah. just <laughs> after the break so this has been a pleasure but we do have to take another break so thanks for chatting with us Peggy Anytime and please more. <laughs> wonderful so you're going to come back as well. Great. Yeah. Okay, so we have to take a break, but please stay tuned because we do have one of these wonderful youth volunteers that's going to talk about her engagement with politics after the break, so please stay tuned. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. When an impaired driver killed my brother DJ, my life changed forever. During the pandemic, all of our lives changed and many of us turned to alcohol and drugs to cope. As life returns to normal, the increase in substance use from COVID has lingered and some police services report an increase in impaired driving that caused heartbreak and devastation. Now, more than ever, we need your commitment to never drive impaired and to encourage all of your family and friends to do the same. Together, we can save lives. Jeff from Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. We're back for season three. We've had the opportunity to see some great backyards and have some great barbecue. Join us, chilling and grilling with Jeff. Hi, I'm Dan Mailer. I'm the host of London Lights, the show where we talk about notable Londoners who have made a big mark, big impact on the world of music, entertainment, sports, politics. watching Rogers TV. Welcome back to LDN ONT TV. 
wonderful conversation we just had with MPP Peggy Sattler, and now we get to meet Kat. So Kat is one of the people I think that Peggy was talking about who volunteered a little bit on her campaign and is here to talk a little bit about, you know, how, why she cared about getting involved in politics and why you should. Mm -hmm. So um, during the pandemic, there's a lot of people, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. And so we just were all on our phones seeing, you know, what's going on. And I really care about, you know, the city I live in. So I did, you know, I, I had a lot of time to do research on what's going on in the city. And, you know, I s could see a lot of problems going on and, you know, uh, felt a little hopeless, helpless to like I couldn't, nothing I could do. So I really wanted to do something. So I just, uh, I knew I liked the NDP. I liked what their, uh, like their goals and their, what they wanted to do. So I went on the website and I just saw that there was a volunteer tab. I clicked on it. I didn't even know that there was an election happening. This was like mid April. And then I saw that like you could volunteer to foot canvas. And so I signed up and like within one week I was volunteering and you know, going out and knocking on doors. It was very easy. <laughs> surprisingly easy. I, you know, I used to hate it too when I was a politician because I had to do it on my own, but yeah. people go in teams now, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we went in teams, usually like four or five of us just like knocking on doors. It was, it was a very good experience. It was lots of fun. You know, you kind of, you learn a lot and you kind of got to get over a lot of fear of like talking to strangers, especially like talking to strangers about politics <laughs> is very interesting, but most people had a very good response. And what kind of things were people talking about when you were knocking on the doors? Um, I guess mostly just concerns with their schooling, health care, stuff like that, you know, rent, all of that, you know, basics, I guess. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was very interesting to see how people like, responded to the NDP. I was very happy to see a lot of good, good responses. Awesome. Yeah. So, Kat, just to get to know you a little bit better, you're at Franchise? Yeah. yeah. And I'm what are you taking? A broadcasting journalism. Oh my gosh, yeah. so th I, I'm, I'm sitting here with an almost professional. <laughs> yeah. So your goal is to maybe take over my chair and talk yeah. about politics on yeah. TV? Yeah, yeah, something like that for sure. And how's school mm -hmm. been going? Very fun. It's a very interesting course. I love it. And you've been in school at Fanshawe for how long now? Just one year. This is my first year. We just started the second semester last week actually. And so you graduated from high school during the pandemic? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was born in 2002, so one of the 2020 classes. Oh so. wow. Mm -hmm. It was. It was weird, very so, weird. It must be a pleasure to be back in school in person yes, and nice. getting yeah. and starting to meet new people yeah. at school as well. Yeah, that's why I waited till this year so I could be in person. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, for other young people who might be watching who um, maybe are interested in journalism or interested in getting involved in politics, you just you know went to a website yeah. and clicked on a button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very easy, like shockingly easy. I think a lot of people do not do not realize how easy it is to get involved. It's very easy. <laughs> and are you gonna stay involved? Oh yeah, oh yeah. And there's so many places to volunteer with, even when there's not like a campaign happening. There's like so many, you know, groups, organizations who are helping the city that you can just like go on their website and they, most of them have places you can volunteer. <laughs> if you're out there, you know, if you've got some spare time and you wanna make your city yes. better, just like Kat, click mm -hmm. on that button, do mm -hmm. your research and get involved. So thank you so much yeah, for being here today, you. Kat. Thank you again to Peggy Sattler and thank you for tuning in mm -hmm. to this episode of LDN ONT TV here on Rogers TV. We hope you tune in again next week. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Monday night's a winner with Optimus TV Bingo on Rogers TV. With a weekly prize board of $3,000, the money raised funds projects to help the youth in our community. You can pick up your cards